Okay, in this video we're going to continue with our talk about displacement and uh, add in a new term distance and we're going to talk about how to combine multiple displacements and multiple distances into a total displacement or distance. The difference between distance and displacement is that distance is the scalar version of displacement. That means that we're not interested in the direction that you've traveled but only the total path length traveled by the object. If we imagine a simple scenario here where maybe you started at this location and you moved all the way over here and then you moved back, okay? Let's say that this was 10 meters and this was 5 meters. <coughs> you can see that your change in position here or your displacement would be 5 meters. Maybe this is all, let's call this east. Alternatively, your distance would be 15 meters because I don't care that this is east and that this is west. I'm just looking for my total path. Imagine you're laying out a piece of string as you go along and then the uh, distance would be the total length of that string. Distance is a scalar in that it has size but ignores direction. And displacement is a vector in that it has size and direction. Uh, most commonly, distance will be measured in meters, although we're going to see situations where we leave it in kilometers like we did previously. And the common symbol here is delta D, and you're going to notice the lack of arrow on top, which is our notation, our notation for saying that it is a um, scalar, not a vector. Okay, here's a little problem that's designed to illustrate uh, the difference between these two things. A golf ball is hit from 15 meters west of the clubhouse to 100 kilometers east of the clubhouse. Then in the second shot, 75 meters uh, east of the clubhouse again. So these are positions. These uh, 1,575 are all positions of the golf ball. So D1 here would be 15 meters west. D2 would be 100 uh, meters east. And D3 goes back to 75 meters east. These all have size and direction, so they're all vectors. If I want to make a scale diagram of this situation, I guess it won't be particularly scale, but let's just put the clubhouse right here. And the golf ball is going to start a little bit east or west of that, specifically 15. Then it's going to, in its initial hit, going to go all the way over to uh, some location. Let's call that 100 meters east and then finally so this will be D1 this is D2 and then finally it'll come back to D3 and D3 is 75 meters now I think based on this we can just look at this diagram and solve all these problems very easily but um, just to get just to get the final answers from the diagram so that when we do them mathematically we can see how they make sense. Um, I'm just gonna deal with these two. I'm gonna use some colors here. In the first situation it traveled 115 meters um, east and then in the second situation it went back um, it was 100 meters east and now it's only 75 meters east so that must have been 25 meters west, we can come up with that then, that the total displace, or total distance traveled is going to be 115 plus 25 or 140 meters, and we can come up with the total displacement by saying it is 85 plus 75, it is a 90 meters east of where you started.
right? Those two, those two combined. But let's look at this uh, in individual steps, and let's just get some practice with our formulas, doing everything very formally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it delta d a when it goes from position two, or from position one to position two, and then I'll call it delta d b when it goes from um, position two to position three. Now I'm just going to switch my pen color here because when I did it on the diagram I used green so I might as well use green. Here I went from 100 meters east less uh, from the position of 15 meters west. Now you'll recall from the last video that if I have something like 15 meters west I need a common direction here to find this displacement so I can change that 15 meters west to a negative Two negatives make positive. Uh, I've done my standard here. I've made east positive. And so I can see that my displacement in that section of, or in that sh golf swing or whatever, is 115 meters east. And that corresponds to what I said right here. And then in the secondary situation, or delta dB, I lost my arrow there somehow. I went from uh, my 100 meters east to a position of just 75 meters east, which works out to be negative 25 meters east, or if you prefer, 25 meters west, and that's what I'm showing here. That's, so this is the first shot and the second shot. Now to compare displacement and um, distance, delta D total, if I'm interested in displacement, is the sum of these individual displacements, delta DA and delta DB, which would be 115 meters east plus 25 meters west and uh, I'm just going to move my next example down here I'll touch, I'll just give myself a little bit more space again I've declared east as my positive direction so this can be turned into negative 25 meters east and then if I go plus 25, or 115 minus 25 effectively, I get 90 meters east. Again, going back up to the diagram, 15 plus that 75, and my total displacement or my total change is to 90 meters to the east, which is what, what I have here. Alternatively, if I want to do my total distance, I use the same formula, but now I'm dealing with scalars. So I'm uninterested in my total, or I'm uninterested in my overall direction. 115 meters plus 25 meters. And you'll notice what happens here is because I didn't call it 25 meters west, I just called it 25 meters, that when I go to add these things, I don't have to make it negative, and as a result I get my total path length, or the total distance traveled by the golf ball, ignoring the uh, ignoring the directions. So I get a total distance of 140 meters. Again, in this situation, they went all the way to 115 and back 25. If you were uh, pulling out string behind you or measuring your path that you have to walk to hit these things, then you have gone a total of 140 meters. 
And that's what distance is. One more example here to follow that up. Plane is flying to Toronto, flies 2,000 kilometers north from Miami, then it's rerouted to Niagara Falls and travels 100 kilometers south. The plane uses approximately $80 per 100 kilometers of fuel. How much fuel could have been saved by flying directly to Niagara? So um, here you're going to start way down here in Miami, and you're going all the way up to Toronto, and then you're coming back. Um, this is 2,000 kilometers north, and this little bit here is 100 kilometers south. This problem is different from the last problem, and it's it can be a little bit subtle in the wor wording. There's a follow-up video to this video that deals with this. But 2,000 kilometers north is not a position. It's a displacement. It's a thing that the plane is actually doing. This is delta D1. It is not D1. We didn't say that the plane was 2,000 kilometers north in, in Toronto. We said it flies 2,000 kilometers north from Miami to Toronto. So that's an actual distance or displacement covered by the plane. Similarly, when it gets rerouted, and it's delta D2 here, that's a displacement. It's not a position. We're not saying that Niagara Falls is 100 kilometers south of Toronto. We're saying that the plane travels that 100 kilometers. It's, it's subtle, but it's different. If it was these guys, then we would be using these formulas, delta D equals D2 minus D1, that we saw from the last video. But because we're dealing with actual displacements here, we want to do the totals. So delta D total, or the displacement total, 2,000, is equal to the sum of these individual displacements. Similarly, delta D, or distance, is going to be the sum of the individual distances. These equations, again, look very similar, but you'll notice the arrows on the top equation that are lacking on the bottom, and that's going to represent the fact that in the top equation, we're going to take into account those distances, and the bottom we will not. So 2,000 kilometers north plus 100 kilometers south, 2,000 kilometers north. I'm going to treat north as the positive direction here, plus negative 100 kilometers north. And I'm getting 1,900 kilometers north as my displacement. Alternatively, with my distance, I'm ignoring those directions. So I got 2,000 kilometers plus 100 kilometers for a total of 2,100 kilometers. Didn't make the south negative, and as a result, the number worked bigger. The question actually asked is, what's the difference between those two things? So this is how far you actually went, and you had to travel a lot farther to get there. So what's the difference? So I went 2,100 when all I wanted to do was go 1,900. So my difference here is 200 kilometers. I want an extra 200 kilometers that I didn't need to go. The question suggests that it's $80 per 100 kilometers of fuel. And so we can see here that we, I guess, spent an extra $160 on fuel that we didn't need to. Uh, this this number of money per kilometers is totally made up. I have no idea what those kinds of numbers look like for airplanes. I just made something up for this example. So that's the difference between distance and displacement and trying to refer back to position while looking at it. Um, again, there's one more PowerPoint that's just going, or one more video that's just going to try to address specifically the difference between those two equations because I know they are a little bit confusing.